So hello, Astro people. Quick cap on uh, the coordinate systems. Let's go through the ecliptic coordinate system. So the ecliptic, as we discussed before, is the apparent path of the sun in the sky. It's essentially the projection on the celestial sphere of the orbit of the Earth. Here you are seeing the celestial sphere, the celestial equator in blue, and the ecliptic in orange. So why is it that we would like to define ecliptic coordinate systems if we already have the equatorial system? This is a simple change of coordinates so that the path of the sun, which would be up and down in declination, becomes a uniform motion in the ecliptic. The sun simply does not change one of its coordinates. So the coordinates that we're going to use in the ecliptic are the ecliptic longitude and ecliptic latitude, right? So the sun, over the course of the year, does not change its ecliptic latitude. By definition, the sun is at the ecliptic. So these are the definitions of the angles in the ecliptic. You have that uh, both right ascension and ecliptic longitude start at the vernal equinox. And like right ascension, it increases to the east. And ecliptic latitude is from the ecliptic to the star up to the ecliptic north pole. The same way that the celestial equator, the great circle of the celestial equator defines two poles, so does the ecliptic. You have now the north ecliptic pole and the south ecliptic pole. As you can imagine, Ecliptic coordinates are very useful for solar system studies where the planets are more or less on the same plane. They're near the plane of the ecliptic. So this coordinate system is going to be very useful for solar system studies. So if these definitions of the celestial equator and the ecliptic and these coordinates, we can already start to see some patterns on the celestial sphere. For example, the path of the sun. Right, let's trace here the path of the sun. This is the declination of the sun as a function of the year. Uh, so these lines here, they define the lines of the solstices. As you see, this is identical to the inclination between the celestial equator and the ecliptic, right? The celestial equator is a projection of Earth's equator and uh, meridians on the celestial sphere, whereas the ecliptic is a projection of the orbit. So the inclination between the celestial equator and the ecliptic is going to be the inclination of Earth's axis with respect to its orbit. And this inclination is 22 degrees and a half, which is the maximum declination that the sun gets either north or south. So this line defines the solstices, where the sun stops. The word solstice comes from Latin, solstitium, sun stop. It's the instant when the sun reverts its north-south annual motion. It defines either the longest or the shortest night of the year. And when the sun is on the equator, it defines the equinox. So equinox comes from Latin equinoctium, which means equal nights. It's the instant when the sun is at the celestial equator, so you have days and nights of equal duration. Notice that I did not put the seasons here because they depend on the hemisphere. On the northern hemisphere, this would be winter solstice in December, the autumn equinox in September, summer solstice in June, and the vernal equinox in March. Of course, in the southern hemisphere, it's the opposite. In June, you have the winter solstice. In December, you have the summer solstice. Spring equinox is in September, and the autumn equinox is in March. Question that appeared again in Kuhn. At midnight on November 12, one of the four target fields lay overhead the Las Campanas. What is its right ascension and its declination? 
there is an information here that the latitude of Las Campanas is about 29 degrees south. It's in Chile. So to answer this, you simply need to recall that the latitude of the place is the angle between the celestial equator and the zenith. And because the uh, diurnal motion is parallel to the celestial equator, a star that passes by the zenith has declination equal to the latitude of the place. And of these four options here, the only one that is close enough to the latitude of the place is Chandra Deep South. Hubble Deep Field South would be declination minus 60 would be overhead if you were in Antarctica. These two here would be if you're close to the equator, that's when you would see them passing overhead. Therefore, we are left with the Chandra Deep Field South as the correct answer.